Okay, folks, real quick before we get into the heart of the matter, I have a special request of you. I'm recording this on September 2nd. Yesterday, September 1st, my mother celebrated her 80th birthday. I would love it if all of you who are watching this would just take one quick second and just wish her a happy birthday in the comments. If you do that for me, that'd be great. Thank you so much. Okay, on to the matter at hand. Also yesterday... Not the highlight of the day on my mother's 80th birthday. Joe Biden gave a primetime speech, which was quite honestly uh, full of rhetoric and imagery that is disturbing and quite honestly not becoming of the office of the president of the United States in my humble opinion. So in this video, I want to dig into some of the imagery uh, and then I want to I want to talk about two specific things. First, I feel like a lot of the speech was a reflection of Biden himself and of the Democratic side of politics uh, of the left. And I want to dig into why I think that and give some examples and talk about that. And then I also want to show kind of a of a blatant disregard or perhaps just not a full understanding that Biden has for the Constitution itself. And I, I want to dig into this because this this belief of what we are, this this idea is spreading out of control, in my opinion. And if we don't understand our Constitution, if we don't understand what we are, then there is no chance as we are are currently a country to continue to exist. So I'm going to dig into that as well. Please stick with me for the whole video. I think you'll find this content unique because I'm going to go in a couple of directions that I don't think anybody else is necessarily going to go. So I think you'll find it useful. My name is Dan. This is the Soul of Wisdom. If you haven't been here before, welcome. It's good to have you here. I've said this in a lot of videos recently. I believe it is incredibly important right now to not be stingy with your subscribe button and your like button and hitting the notification bell. For any creator, large or small, if they want to have discussion, you need to be subscribing to these people, liking their videos, sharing their videos. I ask it for me. I also ask it for any other creator, large or small, who wants to have a discussion because it is the discussion that they are trying to stop. And honestly, Biden's speech last night is a reflection yet again of this, this idea that we don't want to have discussion get in line and follow along that's what they're looking for okay let's dig into this shall we if you are watching on youtube or rumble there's going to be a lot of stuff on your screen today if you're on the podcast side just listen along and i will describe as we go but i want to start off with just the imagery itself this is just a still from biden's speech last night and there's a lot of disturbing things about just the overall tone that was set and the the stage that they created from him, for him. Now this was in Independence Hall in Philadelphia, you know where this country was in a lot of ways founded. In in this setting, they went with this this dark red lighting behind him. This you know, and we know what you, you red conveys passion for sure. But it also portrays like, like authoritarianism, like like death, uh, force. You know, I've studied a lot of the psychology of colors uh, for use in the various businesses and stuff that I have have run and founded and whatnot. And red is one of those colors that you use when you want to portray strength and authority for sure. Um, and then, you know, this is admittedly a still, and it's just one point where he's doing it, but he's got his fists up in an almost uh, uh, 1930s leader of Germany kind of way. You know, and and he spent a lot of the speech kind of shouting like that person back from 1930s Germany and 1940s Germany used to do. It's just not a good look. But let's go even a little bit further. This is lightened up so you can see it a little better. But you'll notice flanked on each side behind him uh, are Marines. 
he staged two Marines behind him. For what other reason would a president do that in a speech than to be a show of force? I mean, you know, if he's giving an address from the Oval Office, he doesn't have uh, members of the military flanking him on each side. He's clearly there, again, along with the color and everything else, him or pro probably his handlers, quite honestly. I think they probably doped him up to give this speech. I don't really think he's running things. I think the radicals behind him are doing this. But they've, they've put out this framing of we're in charge, we're in authority. And isn't this interesting, too, from the people who for so long have been the defund the police crowd, the the anti the anti-law enforcement kind of crowd, they're suddenly, you know, propping up the military like we're in charge. And this is also the same group who all of a sudden is defending the FBI with everything going on with Trump. That's another video, another discussion. But isn't it interesting that they're like, we need to, you know, get rid of these people who try to hold authority over us, but, but we'll support them when it's important. And right now, you know, he's, he's got, military force behind him because he feels it's important to his cause so this is uh in the new york times it's in a lot of places so this is the full text of biden's speech and i highlighted a bunch of things that i want to talk about this one at the top i'm going to come back to but i just highlighted a few a few sentences because i want to talk about how how I think this speech is is more, he's reflecting himself, or again, his handlers are reflecting themselves, the views of the far left. And this happens so often, if you think about it. Think about when you were a kid and, you know, the neighborhood bully. So often the neighborhood bully uh, tries to project the strength because in reality, he has weakness inside himself that he's scared of, you know. How often do people accuse their spouse of something like, uh, you know, you do this and that that I don't like, or you don't love me in the way that I like, but the reality is they're that way themselves. This sort of thing happens all the time, and I think that's that was clear in Biden's speech, so I want to make the case for that a little bit. So one of the things I highlighted here, Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the foundations of our republic. Well, extremism, really, especially now, is just kind of a matter of which side you're on, isn't it? Because we could also claim that it's extremism that we can't define what a woman is anymore. It's extremism that we're going to take 70 some was it 72 73,000 votes whatever it was that 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 Trump got in 2020 we're going to take all those people and we're going to label them as extremists because they voted for a guy but yet we're saying that we want to defend the vote that's what the left is saying that the vote is important we have to defend it we have to respect it but but yet we're taking those people and demonizing them. Isn't that extremism? Isn't it extremism that we don't have a respect for law from the point that, <clears throat> excuse me, from a point that in 2020, the left was silent on all of the violence that was going on throughout the United States after George Floyd? Isn't that extremism? Isn't it the various uh, DAs around the country who are very left-leaning? And they're the ones who are choosing to let people out with no bail, choosing not to prosecute various crimes, even though there's laws in place demanding that they prosecute on these crimes. Isn't that extremism? So he can claim <clears throat> that there's extremism on the Republican side and sure okay there's extremism on both sides but honestly he's ignoring the extremism on the left and if you're doubting the extremism on the left go spend an hour on twitter and see the kind of things that are talked about there just saying 
Uh, something else I highlighted here. And here, in my view, is what is true. MAGA Republicans do not respect the Constitution. They do not believe in the rule of law. They do not recognize the will of the people. They refuse to accept the results of a free election, and they're working right now as I speak in state after state to give power to decide elections in America to partisans and cronies, empowering election deniers to undermine democracy itself. Okay. Some of this actually dovetails into what I just talked about. But, you know, he's saying they don't respect the Constitution. Well, it was the Constitution that the Supreme Court recently used to put the matter of abortion back to the states because they couldn't find anything in the Constitution that actually gave the Supreme Court the right to decide that the entire United States should follow a certain law there. Now, they could go at the federal level and try to create abortion law, but they haven't done that. Instead, it's more convenient for them to bitch and complain about how this is now an issue so they can use it as a wedge. And that's exactly what they're doing. But the court tried to respect the Constitution there. But on the left, they're not showing a respect for the Constitution because they believe that the state shouldn't be able to decide this. So... Again, kind of a reflection on himself and of his party, I would think. They do not believe in the rule of law. Well, I just talked about that with DAs not enforcing actual laws. They don't recognize the will of the people. Maybe somebody should bring up Stacey Abrams in Georgia, who still has not conceded the gubernatorial election there from years ago, where she swears up and down, right, left, and sideways that it was stolen from her. Just saying. They refuse, to they refuse to accept the results of free election. Again, see Stacey Abrams. And then he says they're working right now as I speak in state after state to give the power to decide elections in America to partisans and cronies. Give me a state. A state. Where they are trying to pass laws that would actively put the ability to decide elections into the hands of partisans and cronies. I know of states that are trying to purge their voter rolls of people who aren't around anymore or who are, multi who are registered multiple ways. I know of states who are trying to make sure that voter integrity is there through things like voter ID or pulling back on some of the mail-in voting, which is much more easy to commit fraud with. I know of things like that. But find me a state, a one state, that's actually trying to take away the power to vote from its citizens. You can't find it. You can make up stories, but none of it's true. Uh, boy, this guy's just amazing to me. Okay, here's another one. I know this nation. I know you, the American people. I know your courage. I know your hearts. I know your history. This is a nation that honors our Constitution. We do not reject it. Okay? Just talked about that. This is a nation that believes in the rule of law. We do not repudiate it. I just talked about that. Yes, they do. This is a nation that respects free and fair elections. Just talked about that. We honor the will of the people. We don't deny it. Just talked about that. This is a nation that rejects violence as a political tool. I just talked about that. We do not encourage violence. Yes, you do. Let's go back to George Floyd in 2020 again. And all of the cops, especially up in Minneapolis and, and other places too, who were told by their leaders to stand down and let the violence happen. Don't tell me. And those were left-leaning places. This wasn't allowed in, in right-controlled areas. This is in places like Minneapolis and Portland and Seattle. Don't tell me that you don't believe in violence as a political tool. Yeah, you do. Just saying. We are still in America that believes in honesty and decency and respect for others. Do we really believe in honesty? Really? Really? I don't think so. We can't even be honest and say what a man is and what a woman is. And actually stick with that basic honesty that nature provides us. We have to deny that. So, so if we can't even get beyond the basics like that, don't tell me that honesty is something that's being upheld. No, it's not. 
<sighs> okay. And one last thing here before I jump back up at the top. Only if we the people see politics not as total war, but a mediation of our differences. And he was talking there about how, how we can kind of heal a little bit. So he's saying we need to say po see politics as mediation, a, a way to come together and solve our differences. But yet this entire speech was about slamming half the electorate. It was about demonizing half of the electorate. It was about saying that 70 some million people who voted for Trump are wrong. They're in the wrong. But yet he's, but then he says, well, it's mediation of our differences. No, he's not interested in that. Let's jump back up to the top a minute and change directions slightly. <clears throat> so he's talking about right away where he's giving the speech at. And he's giving the speech in Independence Hall in Philadelphia. He says, this is where America made its Declaration of Independence. This is where the United States Constitution was written and debated. And then he says, these two documents and their ideas they embody, equality and democracy, are the rock upon which this nation is built. This I want to dig into. Because it's wrong. What he's saying there is wrong. They don't teach civics and government in schools anymore at least with any kind of accuracy. They don't do it in colleges and universities anymore. I knew early in my life what the Declaration of Independence and what the Constitution was really about. I understood how this government was set up and how it worked because it was taught to me. But now they throw around these words of equality and democracy. We were not set up for equality or democracy, quite honestly. The United States is a representative republic. It is not a democracy. It never has been. So this idea that we need to defend something that we have never been is an attempt, quite honestly, to overthrow what we are. When they're pushing for democracy, they're pushing that because they realize that they'll never get to where they want to go under the Republican form. It's been Republic form, rather, not Republican, under the form of being a Republic. It's been said, and quite accurately, that a democracy is two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner, whereas a Republic is a well-armed sheep contesting that vote. The idea is with a democracy, 50 plus one becomes enough to run roughshod over everybody. Where with a republic, there has to be compromise made. But they know that compromise won't get them to where they want to go, so they're pushing this idea of a democracy. But I am telling you, friend, I am telling you, fellow citizen of the United States, if you're listening to me in the United States and you are a citizen, we are not a democracy, and you need to understand that because it's important. The fact that we are not a democracy is what's helped us survive for so long. It's what's helped keep us from running out of control in one direction or another. It's what's kept us grounded. But if you don't believe me, if you think I'm lying to you, let's look at some stuff. This is pulled up on your screen right now. The... Declaration of Independence. And let's search D-E-M-O. So it will pull up words for democracy or democratic or anything like that that would indicate that they were looking to establish a democracy. And you'll see on your screen where when I put in D-E-M-O in a search for this entire page with the full text of the Declaration of Independence, it gives me zero results. And no point did they try to imply that they wanted democracy? Let's go to the actual Constitution. This is the full text of the Constitution right here. 
And let's do the same thing, D-E-M-O. You'll see again it returns zero results. Now, I just noticed as I'm recording, I guess you're going to have to trust me a little bit. Sometimes with the screen grab, it doesn't pull up some of the little extras. I don't know why that is. I use OBS here, and it's a little quirky on some things like that. And I see it's not displaying this on the screen. So my apologies. If you don't believe me, though, please go do this yourself. Pull up a full text of the Constitution or of the Declaration of Independence and then search for DEMO. And you'll see there's no references in either to democracy or democratic or anything. So it just, it's not what we are. Let's look at equality, shall we? Interesting, it doesn't show my search but it does actually show the highlights down in the text. God, OBS is weird sometimes. Anyways, there are only two references to the word equal. And I searched equal because that should still allow for equality or things like that to pull up as long as those letters are in the word. And this is right at the beginning uh, where they're talking about uh, all men being created equal created equal it doesn't imply any kind of equality of outcome any kind of equality of life or anything just that we were created equally that's the only reference let's do the same thing now and let's go to the constitution and let's search equal helps if i spell it right there we go okay there are eight references to equal first reference is in section three where it talks about the senate and it talks about dividing equally that and that's talking about the um when they talk about dividing equally they're talking about the construction of the senate itself okay there is another reference further down what talks about the vice president and their vote uh, and how they have the deciding to vote if the Senate is equally divided. Section 1 of Article 2 talks about uh, the number of electors. So this is about election, and it talks about equal to the whole number of senators and representatives. So the reference to equality there has to do with the Electoral College. Again, another reference further down in that section about equal numbers of votes. Again, Electoral College, another reference to that. There is a part in Article 5. Article 5 talks about amendments to the Constitution. And they talk about how the equal suffrage in the Senate. So in other words, this is breaking down how the ratification process works and who has authority. Again, no, no talk about equality for people. There is a reference in the 23rd Amendment, which says an equal number of electors of the president and vice president equal to the whole number of senators and representatives, blah, blah, blah. So again, that's talking about voting. The only reference in the entire Constitution to equality that has to do with people is in the 14th Amendment. This was passed post-slavery. This was the amendment that gave everybody who was born in the United States, so at the time it was targeted towards the, the former slaves, it grants them citizenship, and it says nor deny any person with its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. The only time the word equal in the United States Constitution is used with regards to citizens talks about having equal protection of the laws. At no point does our Constitution guarantee that we are equal in outcome, that we are equal in opportunity, that we are equal in our stature in society, that we are equal in the amount of money we make, that we are equal in 
the eyes of each other? None of that. The only thing it guarantees is that the laws protect all of us equally. So all of this talk about how democracy and equality is being undermined is a bunch of hooey because we don't have a democracy, nor does the Constitution protect our equality with the one exception of equal protection under the law. That's it. So ultimately, Joe Biden is full of it. The imagery that they portrayed last night was horrible, frightening, quite honestly. And it shows just how, again, I've talked about this so many times, but just how divided we are. We, we really are. It's, it's, it's right and it's left and there doesn't seem to be middle. But this guy who came out in his inaugural speech and talked about how he wanted to lower the temperature and unite us and all these things, he's not interested in that. He never was. He's taking half of the electorate and painting them as criminals. That's the bottom line of that speech you gave. If you don't believe me, go listen to the speech. I've listened to it four times now to make sure that I'm hearing, excuse me, that I'm hearing what I'm hearing. And I am, and it's frightening. But it's possible that he's giving this speech too because they realize that they're going to lose. And they're trying to take one last shot at things. That's possible. Or they could think that they're going to win and they're taking their shot right now to just destroy it all. Because that ultimately, I believe, is what they're hoping to do. You can't use words like democracy and shove that down people's throats when we're not a democracy. If you're really interested in maintaining the ideas and the ideals of this country. Because you're defining it differently than what it actually is. It's not a democracy. It never has been. But they're going to try to frame it that way because it better serves their purposes. So that tells me right there they don't care about preserving the union. They care about tearing it down and remaking it into something that they would hope to find more useful to their cause. That's my takeaways from the speech last night. I think so much of his wording is just a reflection of himself and of his party, quite honestly. I think he's... He's calling out what they are because that's what so many bullies do. They look inward, see what they don't like, and then try to reflect that onto others. That's what's happening there. And he's definitely showing that either he doesn't understand our Constitution or he's completely disregarding it and moving on. Either way. That's my thoughts, but you tell me what you think in the comments after you wish my mother Granted a day later, but a happy birthday nonetheless. After that, do leave me a comment and tell me what you think. Were you okay with where Biden was going in the speech? Are you, like me, concerned that his pushing of the idea of democracy is completely off base and it doesn't make sense given that we're a republic? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Just do please be respectful. Please do like, subscribe, share this video with your friends. I'd appreciate it. Until the next time I see you, thank you for watching.